Hello. It is March 1st when I'm recording this and it's hopefully not too far after March 1st when I've uploaded this. But today is a huge day in our house. I suppose if you found my channel through my Greyhound Frank and through those videos, uh, this video will be hugely relevant to you and interesting to you. But if you haven't, um, I'm kind of taking a break from my usual helping you to navigate through your 20s and 30s to talk about the milestones that myself and my boyfriend's dog has hit uh, in the past year. So today is Frank's gotcha day, which means a year ago today we adopted Frank and we took this massive beast of a hound into our lives and changed our lives for the better. And the last time I did a proper check-in about Frank was about three weeks after we got him. So I'm gonna stick a card up here and down below if you haven't seen that video. And basically I talked about the process of how we adopted him, where we found him, the charity that we went to, went through. And then um, I kind of talk, I have a bit of a small vlog on we'll say the first two to three days. And then about three weeks later, I checked in and just kind of gave an update of how he was getting on. So he, oh, he came on in leaps and bounds during those three weeks. But when we, when I even looked back at the videos and we've looked back at some of Roland's vlogs this morning, we realized that he is a completely different dog to the dog that we brought home on March 1st, 2019. He's, it's, so amazing to see him flourish and to be happy and I kind of just wanted to quantify a couple of the main changes that we've seen in him. So that's what this video is about today and I promise you I do get like the odd comment on some of my other videos saying you're talking too much and there's not enough dog content so I didn't even bother putting makeup on for this video because my plan is to fill it with footage and video of Frank because Ronan has so much footage, I have so much footage and we have photos and we have videos on our phone and if you're not following me on Instagram, go and follow him at Frank T. Great. So here are the 10 biggest changes that we have seen in Frank in 365 days. Okay, so the very first big change is that from, you know, the first month that we got him, he now knows his name. Um, I don't think it took him too long to get to know his name. But written down here, I think it was like maybe four weeks and I don't think he knew his name when I recorded that last video, but it wasn't long after that. Like he definitely understood, maybe that he didn't understand 100% that it was about him, um, but he knows it now and he knows when we say his name and the odd time would have to say his name quite sternly and put a no with it. And he 100% knows and semi listens to us, doesn't always, um, but his name, definitely his name. One thing that we wanted to work on this year was recall and we kind of work on it sometimes, but like we keep him on the lead so often that we just haven't really bothered maybe as much as we should have. So um, I'm gonna shut up for a second and just let you see uh, one thing that we did do is we tried to teach him um, just focus. So we play with treats and we say his name and he has to look us in the eye for like longer than a blink. And if he does that, he gets a treat. So I'm going to insert footage of that here. Um, and you can see how he's getting on with that. Frank. Frank. Good boy. Frank. Good boy. Franco, good lad. Been real good. Mm -hmm. Frank, good. Frank, good boy. Good boy. So yeah, so he knows his name. So that's the first change. The second one then is the quality of his coat. Wow. So. I was looking back, just kind of for research for this video, I was looking back at the, some of the first videos of Frank and I'm gonna insert some footage here of what his coat used to look like. And like you can't, I don't know if you can tell a huge amount from it, but it was so dull. And he had this kind of wiry fur in under his like gorgeous glossy coat that 
I think anyone I've spoken to or I've read, it's like a kennel coat. So he would have had it because he would have been living outdoors in a colder environment. And like in our house, we have the heating on, he has pajamas, we drape him in a blanket. <laughs> at night when we're going to bed in the winter if it's really cold he gets a hot water bottle so like you know cold temperatures are not something that he nearly needs to worry about in our house and we had said we or we had heard that when he started to live in a house that once he got more comfortable with us that he would start to shed that coat uh so he has done and in our maybe the first spring like summer that we had with him so April, May, June, he was shedding like crazy, like absolutely shedding so much, constantly sweeping up hair. Con every time he touched him, there was fur in your hands. So what we did was he actually brought him to a groomer's and this is a shout out for our groomer's, Kate. Kate is uh, for dog's sake groomer's in near Blanchestown and she's excellent. She's a really good sight hound groomer. She's, well, she does any type of dogs, but we found her because we were looking for specifically for like a sight hound groomer. She's really gentle with the dogs. You can stay in when you're getting the dogs groomed and she understands sight hounds. So she was able to tell us like, Jesus, Frank is great or give us advice on food or, you know, his coat or anything. She's just a really good resource when it comes to sight hounds. So between that and then adding porridge into his diet and giving him oils and grooming him and getting him groomed, his coat is fabulous. The very first day that we brought him home from the groomers, the first time he got groomed, I was like, this is the fluffiest dog ever. And I assumed that every time we'd groom him, he would end up like that. However, it is not the case because he is so fluffy and soft pretty much 95% of the time that when he gets groomed, he just has like a nicer smell and he tends to shed less directly after the groom. But his coat's really glossy. The only thing is that he still has a bit of a bald bum and anywhere I've read has said porridge oats um, and oils and maybe like sardines or mackerel. And we give him those things and his coat hasn't, like he's kind of balder in the winter than he was in the summer. Um, but I've spoken to other dog people and follow other dog people on Instagram and they've said the exact same thing, that it's just sometimes this happens to them and they don't really get their um, ball bums to go away for very long. So we're not worried about it. But if anyone has any extra tips besides the ones I mentioned, please leave them in the comments below. Um, but yeah, he's just beautiful. He also, if you remember, he had this little mark on the top of his little snoot and we thought that there'd be a mark that'd be there forever. But within, I don't know how many months actually, let me check that. So I put up this photograph on Instagram on the 25th of April and in it I said that uh, it was like seven weeks apart between the first kind of photograph we had with his scar and the one beside it. And you can see the scar is nearly gone in the seven weeks one um, and it just kept, like even his coat so shiny and glossy and his eyes are so happy. I love it. But um, it start, kept going away, it was nearly gone. Uh, so I'd say it was two to two and a half months before that disappeared. And again, I think it was all the things we were giving him in his coat. So he has no scar anymore and I forget that he had a scar sometimes. But yes, then the third thing is his weight. So it was only when I looked back at footage of the first couple of days that we had him, which again I will insert, he was so skinny, like so skinny. You could see his ribs, too many of his ribs, like usually they kind of say if you can see about three and you can see like three vertebrae poking through and that you can't really see their hip bones or like just the ridge of them and um, which is how he is currently and um, so when we got him we got him weighed and he was 32 and a half kg. Slowly but surely we tried to beef him up. So first off we tried Burns food which was meant to be good for his digestion, but he got skinnier on burns. So then we tried a brand called Skinner's. So that's what he currently eats, which is the salmon and rice flavor of it. We tried the lamb and rice, but TMI, but it's like poops, got a bit runnier. Um, and the, so the salmon and rice seems to be working really well for him and he's been eating that um, probably maybe since about three months in, so kind of middle of the summer, maybe summertime. Um, he's been eating that and we've gradually fattened him up. So when he went to the vet one time recently, he, um, or maybe about six months ago, he was about 35 kg. And then before Christmas he went because he had a little cough. So he was about, he was 38 point 
six kg. And we were feeding at that point, we were feeding with 250 grams of food with oats and extra bits and then treats and stuff um, to bulk him up to that. So we decided to drop his food to 240 grams twice a day. Um, so drop it by 20 grams. And between Christmas and um, about a week ago, he has his weight has fluctuated by like 0.2 of a kg. So we're pretty happy that the amount of food he's currently on is perfect for him as a winter dog. And in the summertime, then we'd probably bump it back up because he might lose a bit of extra weight. But we're delighted that his weight has maintained. You can see from the footage that I've put into this, like, you know, you can see that his ribs have filled in, his spine is filled in. He's more comfortable in his body because it's it's not as sore for him to sit on something harder. Um, and his muscles, his bum muscles and his shoulder muscles, he is like a lad who lifts loads of weights and like eats loads of chicken breasts. He is so strong and even on the lead he's stronger. And one thing we noticed actually, um, which is my fourth point, is that when we got him first, he would be kind of tired and a bit lethargic sometimes on his walks. And he just was like, he'd go on them, but he wasn't delighted about it. He was just a bit like, grand, this is something I have to do. Um, and we think that part of it might've been because he was on the Burns food and he was actually hungry. Now also he didn't know us at the start, but after a while, I think he actually was hungry. And that was what part of the problem was. So now he loves his walks. Like second you take out the lead, tail wagon delighted second you take out the car harness and he knows he's going on a car venture like completely lose the plot helicopter tail dancing around the hall and he just loves it and he loves it when he's out walking for the most part he's either like he either has a real sniffy walk or he just has like a walk where he's just like bopping along minding his own business we have an array of coats for him that we wear well that he wears um and he's just happy and i think a lot of that has got to do with his food he's also as i said stronger on the walk so when he sniffs something that he wants to sniff it is very hard to get him away from it um but that's been a great change like that's amazing he just He's a happy dog and he just likes being out with us. He gets still a bit weird about dogs in our local park, but I think it's because people don't seem to give a crap about the fact that he has a tendency towards being a little bit nervous. Um, but on like our bigger walks in the park and walks with other dogs, particularly Tess, who is his lady friend dog, uh, happy out, just living his best life, full of energy, full of beans, delighted with himself. I kind of regret starting this video on the bed because I don't have a tripod, so I'm holding the camera with my hand. But I thought the dog would be here, but he is having some alone time, which I will discuss in a minute because it's one of my things. Actually, do you know what? I'll discuss it now. So it's his independence. He is a much more independent dog. So, okay. So let me just kind of go back a bit. So in my three week update, I talked about the alone training that we did with Frank and how he was fine on his own and the maximum that we left him was six hours. Now, during the day, if you leave Frank on his own, he's actually grand. We still leave him a treat every time like we go to work, just so that he associates us leaving to go to work with something positive. Um, and if we're going out to the shops, we give him a licky mat with some peanut butter on it. But if we, if there was an emergency or even if like Recently, I just went to the shop and he was sitting in the front room. He watched me leave. And when I came back, he was in the exact same position. Hadn't moved, hadn't moved his head. It was just staring out the window. Didn't seem to care that I was gone. So from that point of view, he's always, I think, to a point been quite independent, but he would still follow us around the house quite a lot, which I didn't mind. Now, if he's on the bed, I can go downstairs and make a cup of tea. And unless I open peanut butter, he won't come down. And if I open peanut butter, he comes tearing down. Um, and even if I'm upstairs during the day, like I'm upstairs right now, and I think part of the problem is he's just like, I know that when she goes upstairs during the day, she comes back down. So I'm just gonna wait down here. So like Ronan's out doing the groceries. I thought it'd be really nice. Like I set up Frank's like comfy bed, which is like his favorite place to sleep in the evening times is beside me on the bed when Ronan's in work. No interest, he's downstairs on the couch looking out the window I'd say. And if I move on to the sixth one, it's about travel. So he was always really good in the car, loves going in the car. He has, it took us a little while to get a car harness for him. So I'll actually put a link to the car harness down below. It's a really like, wasn't a hugely expensive one, but it's very well made. Um, we unfortunately had to test it once or twice because either someone pulled out in front of us and run had to slam on the brakes or well, that was 
the only reasons actually and it kept him in place like he had to readjust himself for a long journey I don't think he's a huge fan of it because he gets stuck in the one spot so if we're going on a long journey we either if it's over an hour and a half we'll take him out of the car and let him stretch his legs but he's also gone away with us we've gone down to our friend's house in Wexford um, we've taken him to an Airbnb, he's visited my granny, he's visited my dad's house. When he visited my granny's house we just put his bed down and he lay down and she used to have greyhounds so she was delighted to see him. And then when we got to my dad's house which was later that evening over Christmas, Frank was roaching. He didn't care. Like photograph of him here. He didn't care, happy out as long as we we're with him. So it bodes really well for being able to maybe go to Airbnbs and to do things like that. So that's the next one. Okay, number seven. This is a big one. When we got Frank first, he wasn't a fan of toys. He didn't understand what they were, just no interest. So we got him loads of toys and he just didn't care. And I think that with the racing dogs, they are possibly, when they're being trained, toys are used, so they're used to them. But I think with the coursers, they're not. So he just didn't know what it was and he was like, and he wasn't a particularly, like the reason that he got put up for adoption was because he wasn't good at coursing, thankfully, because now we have him. But because of that, I just don't think he understood what they were. He didn't get them. He didn't get what they were for. So we just kind of, we'd get him giddy, like Ronan get him giddy in the sitting room or not in the sitting room, in the spare bedroom or in the kitchen. And you could get him to maybe spin in the garden a little bit. Um, so any of the clips that I'm showing you are from the earlier days where we might have him giddy for literally five minutes and then that was kind of it, but about four months in, I can't remember how it started, but one day, I think he would like maybe play with a toy for two, like 20 seconds and he'd stop. But he suddenly just started playing with toys. It was four months after we got him. So we got him in March. So May, June, July. Yeah, it was like July, August. Just started playing with toys and really flourished from there. And now he is an absolute demon for toys. So giddy. He's not He's not too bad at taking things that aren't his. Um, he doesn't really take our stuff that much or it's really good because you can take it off him and just replace it with something else. But for instance, today, we brought him for a walk to meet his lady friend Tess and Tess's owners who are lovely. Um, and they gave him a present. So we brought the present home, Frank went bananas. Like I have footage here it's just fab. Like, I'm just gonna stop talking for a second just so you can watch this about how giddy he got. He nearly bust himself so many times on the wooden floor. Um, and actually, we have to keep his nails, make sure that his nails are really short because otherwise he skids on the wooden floor. But just enjoy this bliss for a second. That just makes me so happy. He's such a happy boy. Then the eighth one is, uh, it's a change that, I was, that I've mixed feelings about. So he was quite silent when we got him first and now he is so sassy. So he's good, like he doesn't bark at strange people, nothing like that. Um, he just, if he wants attention or if we're in a room, and he wants to be in the room, barks. And his bark is so piercing. And you can, you know he's messing because he kind of goes like, bark, bark. And like his tail starts going. Um, I've got loads of footage of that. So again, I'm gonna shut up for a second and just let you hear some of that. But yeah, so you get that bit of sass. Sometimes when I'm making his dinner, if I'm not making it fast enough or if he's hungry, you get that sass. But he's happy and his tail is wagging and I would take it any day. And I, I we try to get him to kind of chill out when we're maybe having dinner. Um, 
you know, or we're trying to make his dinner, I, I try and, I, what I usually do is I put the bowl down and I step out of the room, but sometimes he's barking so much and it's morning time and Ronan's sleeping that I just have to feed him. Um, but he doesn't do it all the time. It's just some days when he's a bit giddy. Uh, but yeah, sassy boy, he is so sassy. <laughs> Uh, but it's great to see. And then the last one is, this was what kind of dominated a lot of the first video and it was about trying to get him to sleep downstairs. So we abandoned that after about two weeks and we let him sleep upstairs. But he used to sleep in the doorway of the spare room. But bit by bit we started to pull the, the bed back and now he sleeps like in the spare room, doesn't look at us. He doesn't open his eyes during the night. He is completely silent. Like if guests stay, he sleeps in with them. He doesn't get try to get up on their bed. He knows that that's his bed. Sometimes um, if we have guests who don't want him to sleep in there, he sleeps in our room. And he knows that like you can play on this bed and sit on this bed during the day. But when it's bedtime, you get into your own bed. And um, he's happy there. Like, yeah, he just, he's a silent sleeper. And maybe from about six onwards and as it gets brighter in the mornings, he starts to stir and you have to be kind of quiet and, and um, not move or else he'll bark and wants to get up and play. Um, but even his bedtime routine is perfect. Like it's the same. He gets a little treat. He gets, in the wintertime he has his pyjamas on. He gets tucked up in a blanket. We got this huge blanket from um, Aldi. A uh, huge big blanket and that's been a game changer because when he stands up it doesn't fall off him like the little blanket that he had so he can kind of curl around and turn a couple of times in the night and he tends to stay quite warm. Um, but yeah, they're all the changes. It, getting a greyhound has been the best decision that me and Ron have ever made. Um, if you have any questions or if you're like watching this and you've got some fears and worries about your dog, throw them in the comments below. Either I'll be able to answer them or someone else who's watching the video might be able to answer them. Um, but I hope that you enjoyed today's video, a little bit more candid than my usual videos. And again, not really about navigating through your 20s and 30s. However, I think that dog ownership is a milestone that everyone should strive to achieve in their 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s. Thanks for watching. And I'll be back with another video in probably two Sundays time. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.